Hey guys, welcome back to this playlist where I show you how to build a SaaS product using Cloudflare Workers. My name is Confident and I am a developer advocate at Cloudflare. And in this video, which is the final video in the series, I'm going to show you how to check for the cached article in the KV store and just wrap up the entire application because we are done right now and we just need to like clean up a bit and we should be able to get this app deployed and test it live. So this is where we are when it comes to our architecture diagram. In the last video, we set up the workflow step to check for the article that is in the cache and to get it sent via email to the user's Kindle address. And we did a quick test using my Gmail account and you can see that we got the article sent and it was delivered to my email account. So that is wonderful. What we'll be doing in this video is we'll be setting up the first step, which is the last step we are getting to work on, unfortunately, which just checks to see if that article has been cached in the first place. And if, if, if it's been cached, it skips the step two, which goes on to like render a new article because there's no need to render the article since we already have it cached. So let's switch over to my IDE and let's write the code to get this done. So switching over to my IDE, we completed the last step or step three of the workflow, which sends the article to the user. What we'll be doing now is we'll be working on the first step, which checks for the article in, in the cache. And this is really easy to do. So in order to check for the article in the cache, um, the KV storage has a list method that we can use to see if a key is in a KV storage. And with that, we can figure out if the article has been cached based on its URL, and then we know what to do from there. So let's uh, get that going. I'm going to say create a variable called cache, const cache equals to await this.env.articlecache.list and we want to list using a prefix of the article's URL. All right, so what we're, what we're going to do is, we're going to do a check. So if the cache.keys.length is greater than zero, which means the article actually exists in a KV cache, what we're going to do here is return true. Else we return false like we're already doing, and what this does is that it controls if the second step of the workflow runs or not, which is the step that does the, the browser ranging, which is this step. So if the article is in the cache, this returns true. There is no need to re-render this article and cache it. And the workflow just directly moves on to step three, which involves uh, sending the email to the user. But if this is not cached, it returns false. It goes on to render and cache the article. And finally, the article gets sent to the user's email. So that is what our workflow does. And with this, we have the workflow completed. Uh, before deploying this application and giving it a test, I also wanted to mention that um, if the state you're storing inside of the workflow is lesser than one megabyte, you can actually just have the workflow handle managing that state and not having to use uh, KV in the first place. So the reason we're using KV is because we're caching PDF files and they can get quite large and that's going to be above the one megabyte limit of state that can be cached in the workflow. So what I mean is state like the URL, the email, the is article cached boolean, the email status uh, object can be managed by the workflow itself and you don't have to like use an external storage. If the articles we're trying to cache was lesser than one megabyte, we could directly store it in a variable and that's going to be handled by the workflow. But we're doing something a bit more complex and that is why we're reaching for an external storage, which is the KV storage. All right, with that out of the way, I'm going to give this another save and we can head back here. I think we will need to redeploy this. So let's redeploy this. And we can run an npm run deploy. All right, so I think everything we need here is good to go. I'm just going to copy this URL. So let's copy this URL and let's head back to the browser because we've tested each part individually and they all work independently. So let's test the workflow um, together as a whole. So I'm going to get the example website, example.com. Oh, that's not correct. 
so that's example.com uh, so that's the example domain let's copy this paste it in here ensure this is HTTPS and I'm going to enter in my Kindle email so not my Gmail um, email address my actual Kindle email I have a Kindle here and let's hit the send button to see if this works all right so the article is being sent to my Kindle and if we head back to the dashboard here if we go take a look at the workflows we have and uh, we should have a workflow all right so this is completed a few seconds ago this took four seconds to get that article sent to my kindle and the reason it's so fast is because we already have it cached so that is going to directly pull the article from the cache get it emailed to my kindle and if i open this we should be able to see it on in my library so let's give this a second or two to reload so we can see all of the new articles that the new article that was sent okay so this came in just now and i'm going to open it up and you can see we have the example website article rendered and sent to my kindle it's been delivered and i can read this just like any kindle book which is really awesome so we have this project completed it's really lovely to see that using cloudflare workers and all of the technology that it includes you can easily build SaaS products without spending too much or in fact for free so this is really lovely um this is where we'll be ending the playlist and i'm open to receiving suggestions on you on what to do to improve this uh, piece of SaaS software. I've already gotten two suggestions so far. The first is adding a recommendation system using Workers AI based on the kind of articles you have sent in the past so you can have a recommendation for stuff that you might be interested in reading um, in your Kindle device. And the second suggestion is um, converting the files to EPUB so you have better text scaling and image scaling and it feels more native like a kindle book format so that's the other thing i'll be working on and i'll share that with you when it becomes available this has been really awesome i hope you learned 18 or two uh, don't forget to get subscribed and i'll see you in a future playlist or a future video um, keep building uh, see you next time bye